you are familiar with the term machine here you can see this man is using a car jack to lift up a car in this case the car jack is also a simple machine why because by applying a small force or a small effort we can lift up heavier objects like this heavy car so can you tell me if this car jack is a simple machine where will be the effort given and which is the load in, the, in this case so in this case if the car jack is a simple machine can you tell me where will be the effort given and which will be the load in this case well you can see the man is holding the car jack by its handle therefore the effort would be like this in the downward direction on the handle of the car jack and you can understand that the load would be the car so this is the load whenever you go to grocery shops or supermarkets at times it becomes very difficult to carry your stuff in baskets like this so we prefer using a trolley you can see this trolley has wheel connected to axle four of them so this trolley having wheel and axle is also a simple machine why because it helps us carrying heavy objects like all our grocery items or the shopping items like a larger distance by applying a smaller effort on on the handle just by pushing the trolley so the trolley having wheel and axle is also a simple machine now while ri uh, riding bicycles do you apply the effort on the wheel to move the bicycle well no you apply effort on the pedals of the bicycle by applying a smaller effort on the pedals of the bicycle it moves the larger wheels and you go a longer distance so in this case the pedal and the wheel of the bicycle is also a simple machine because it allows you to apply the effort at a convenient point or a convenient direction in order to move a larger distance or a larger velocity so now you know there are many advantages of using simple machines but in the terms of physics the advantage of using a machine can be described by its mechanical advantage so for a simple machine the mechanical advantage defines three major aspect the first one the mechanical advantage defines how much the machine multiplies the effort in moving the load that is how much effort you are exerting on the machine and how much the machine is multiplying it in moving the load or to overcome a resistive force so machines which help in applying a smaller effort to move a larger load are known as force multipliers another type of machine like the wheel and axle used in trolley help you to move a larger distance so the mechanical advantage in this case will define how much faster is the work done in moving the load by the machine so this type of machines help to obtain a gain in speed now there are different kind of machines like the pedals and the wheel wheels of the bicycle which help you to change the direction or the point of application of effort so mechanical advantage also define whether a machine allows you to change the direction or the point of application of effort at a convenient point or at a convenient direction now mechanical advantage can be described by the following formula mechanical advantage is usually given by the output force divided by the input force the input force is the force which you are giving on the machine that is the effort 
and the output force is the force which is done on the load or to overcome the load. So this expression can be written as load by effort. So from now on, we'll refer mechanical advantage as load by effort. Now you can see both load and effort are force. Therefore, two similar terms in the numerator and denominator cancel off. Therefore, mechanical advantage does not have any unit. So now you know that mechanical advantage is load by effort. Now there are different kinds of simple machines. Somewhere the load might, might be greater than the effort. Sometimes the load and the effort might be equal. Or at times the effort might be greater than the load. So following these three conditions, the mechanical advantage can be either greater than one. It is greater than one when the load is greater than effort. That is, you are applying a smaller effort to overcome a larger load. Secondly, the load and the effort might be equal. So in this case, the mechanical advantage would be equal to one when the load is equal to the effort. Thirdly, the mechanical advantage might be lesser than one. You know in which case when the effort would be greater than the load. Now let us see some example which will define these three conditions. See here, we uh, use a nutcracker to break open a nut, which is very difficult to do by hand. So by using a nutcracker, we are using a smaller effort and we are overcoming a very large load. So in this case, the load is greater than the effort. And since mechanical advantage is equal to load by effort, so if load is greater, effort is smaller, mechanical advantage would be greater than one. Now can you tell me where is the effort applied and which is the load in this case? Here we are applying effort on the handle of the nutcracker and this is the load, that is the nut we are trying to break open. Now imagine this condition where you can lift up a water bucket directly upwards from a well or you can use a structure like this that is a pulley for lifting the water bucket by applying the effort in a downward direction. The water bucket does not change, therefore the load remains the same. The effort also remain the same, but here the direction of the effort being applied is changing in a downward direction. So in this case, the load is equal to the effort. And since you know that mechanical advantage is load by effort, so mechanical advantage in this case would be equal to one. So the machine like a pulley, which has mechanical advantage equal to one, will be used in changing the direction of applying the effort to a convenient direction. Now consider this case. In this case, this hockey player is using a greater effort in moving a smaller load but a larger distance. So in this case, the effort applied is greater than the load you can see here. Therefore, the mechanical advantage would be less than one because we know mechanical advantage is load by effort. So machines which have mechanical advantage less than one, like the hockey stick here, would be used to obtain a greater movement of the load. And these type of machines are also known as speed or velocity multiplier. So these are used to obtain a greater movement of the load. Now it's very important to consider here that for practical machines, mechanical advantage is not always constant. Why? Because along with the load, there are other resistive forces like friction, which also act. Therefore, the mechanical advantage 
of a practical machine is not always constant. 